Welcome to today's Postgres conference webinar, The Evolution of Partitioning Features in PostgreSQL, A Supercharged Elephant. We're joined by Joe Augustin, Senior Support Engineer at Percona, who will discuss the importance of upgrading to the latest versions of Postgres and the maturation of partitioning features in Postgres. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. A little bit about your speaker. Jobin is a PostgreSQL expert and open source advocate who has more than 18 years of working experience as consultant, architect, administrator, writer, and trainer in Postgres, Oracle, and other database technologies. He's always been an active participant in the open source community, and his main focus area is database performance and optimization. Welcome, Jobin. A few quick notes for our attendees, and then we'll get started. So the first is that I've put all attendees on mute to avoid background noise and to preserve audio quality. And the second is yes, we are recording this webinar and it will be accessible on the Postgres conference site by early next week. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off. Take it away, Jobin. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, welcome to Postgres conference uh, webinar. And today's our topic is evolution of partitioning features in Postgres. PostgreSQL, and it is uh, uh, maturing over a period of time. That's the, the concept of this talk is. So let us get started. Mm, welcome to uh, the presentation. And myself, uh, Jobin Augustine, uh, I work for Percona, and uh, I have uh, public uh, profiles, uh, LinkedIn and GitHub. I have a few interesting scripts in the GitHub. Please visit. Yeah, and I used to blog. Please visit my blogs as well. So first of all, uh, why this talk is, okay. Uh, the Postgres partitioning feature is maturing over a period of time. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is one of the powerful uh, feature now. And, uh, um, and when we consider the partitions in Postgres, um, it is basically tables. This architecture is quite different from other database systems. And uh, this is very simple, uh, elegant, and a portable architecture. And uh, because when, when we dis uh, community designed this architecture, uh, we considered almost all other partitioning features available in other database systems. So, um, a partition table is a collection of tables. Each partition is a uh, basically an individual table uh, by its own uh, collection of tables, and um, and it is uh, referred as partitions. Partitions belongs to a partition table, and uh, the parent table uh, does not store the data. This is a this is a basic concept behind uh, uh, the the partitioning uh, in Postgres. Okay, and when we talk about the evolution, it all started uh, long back. So there was a prehistoric age for uh, the Postgres partitions also. And there were many attempts to solve this puzzle of partitioning in Postgres. Uh, and it started um, by partitioning uh, the table inheritance possible in uh, Postgres, and there was a parallel attempt to create a block range index uh, because that is virtually partitioning a table. So these were the attempts before uh, the, the, the real uh, native partitioning uh, possible in uh, Postgres. And uh, we need to know a little bit about uh, table inheritance, uh, the, the prehistoric part of uh, the, the new native partitioning. Uh, because still it is relevant and uh, there are a lot of installations still using this uh, method of partitioning. And um, this is possible because PostgreSQL is, uh, is a, is a object-relational uh, database, object-relational da uh, database management system. It's called ORDBMs. Uh, and it supports table inheritance, uh, unlike many other database uh, systems. So the table in, in inheritance can be used for creating sub tables or uh, child tables. 
So th this is a syntax. So the what we are seeing in the screen is the syntax. Create table, uh, a table name, event, uh, some year, like the uh, the other uh, the uh, parent table, including all. Inherits the table. So um, all the so the inherits means it, it it inherits the defaults, constraints, indexes, storage, and comments, etc. Uh, all these things will be copied to the child table. It it inherits everything. So um, the child table have um, uh, can have uh, additional check constraints later. So um, uh, instead of talking a lot, uh, seeing the what what it is will be uh, interesting. So uh, a quick demo. Um, let me pull up the demo screen. Yeah, hope you are seeing my screen. And um, I'm going to create a table. So uh, what you're seeing in my screen, uh, we have uh, Postgres 10 in this uh, window and in this box and Postgres 11 here, 12 here and 13 here. So I'm going to fire the same command, same set of commands in all the windows. So here we go. So I'm going to create a table. So um, uh, create table, uh, some columns, and uh, yeah, table is created in in all all Postgres uh, instances. And now I'm going to create an index on that. So if you describe, um, it, it's a regular table, okay. And now we can create a child table by inheriting all these things. Okay. So create table uh, events. So it, as, as the message says, uh, uh, it, it inherits uh, uh, a lot of things and it creates a child table. So if you, if you describe the child table, we can see that the primary key is inherited and um, the index is inherited. So basically what all things are there in the parent, all those things are um, inherited. So um, apart from that, we, I just briefly mentioned about the additional uh, check constraint. Okay, so I'm going to drop this partition um, quickly. So. Sorry. Okay, and uh, then create part, uh, child tables with those additional check constraints. Okay, as we can see, uh, create table uh, with the check constraints, uh, the date between these these dates. So um, only those values which satisfy this check constraint can get into um, this child table. And it works across all the Postgres versions. So even though we are talking about a uh, old inheritance based partition, we should remember that it is not something discontinued. It is still relevant and we have a lot of users still using that. And uh, we can have uh, multiple um, uh, sub partitions um, so, or uh, uh, partitions. So uh, uh, another range and another range. So this is uh, the way we, we used to create uh, the child partitions or child inherited um, uh, ch child partitions. Okay. Going back to the presentation. Uh, so uh, we saw how check constraints are added to the inherited partitions. Uh, due to these check constraints, each uh, child table can hold only validated data. So we, we are clear that the data is really partitioned into child tables. And uh, it works on the concept of constraint exclusion. Uh, 
uh, constraint exclusion will skip over the tables whose check constraint guarantee that there there is no way to satisfy the condition for the query so if we have a, a partition for values uh, with the with the check constraint uh, values in between 1 to 10 uh, we are sure that there won't be a value called value of 20 okay that that will be in another partition so the the postgres can use the check constraint as a constraint exclusion method to eliminate or prune the partitions uh, and arrive at the right partition. This is the uh, underlying concept behind the inheritance-based uh, partitioning. But, however, uh, we additionally need something to redirect the rows to these partitions. So that is done by triggers. So triggers are added to the parent table to redirect the data to individual partitions. Okay, so the, um, what we are discussing is about the, the pre-native partitioning uh, available in Postgres. And it, it, is, it worked and still working, but there are a lot of limitations. One is the trigger which we talked about. The trigger has a lot of overhead on transactions. And the constraint exclusion method is not so intelligent. It's it's a it just checks the the constraint values and uh, uh, select the partitions. So it's not intelligent enough. And uh, because of that, only equality and range comparisons can work with the uh, constraint exclusion, which is a big limitation. And um, we keep seeing a lot of uh, Postgres user complaints that. Uh, uh, this partitioning is not really working fine. Uh, the partition pruning is not happening properly. Yeah, so because all these are limitations of the uh, the really dumb way of partitioning the table uh, based on inheritance. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, it is a maintenance overhead for DBAs. Partitioning maintenance requires a lot lot more complex procedures uh, like creating the check the maintaining the check constraints and uh, triggers but luckily we had many uh, extensions postgres is known for extensions uh, and pg partman is one of the extension for uh, automating this uh, maintenance process so uh, even though it is automated uh, by external methods uh, there is always there is a maintenance um, overhead the, we need to install this extension and maintain it and make sure that everything is working fine okay so over a period of time uh, community so that there is a scope for a native partitioning mm, and uh, it was in 2017 uh, the postgres 10 is released with the native declarative partitioning feature it, it was not a evolutionary in nature. It was a, it's a big mutation. Uh, yeah, that's all to a completely different um, syntax. Um, and um, um, the, the new syntax um, came, uh, create table um, um, partition by uh, what, what is the word, what type of partitioning it is. So uh, range partitions and the list partitions uh, were there in Postgres 10. And um, many of the maintenance overhead is removed. Uh, the automatically it creates the partition constraints internally and it takes care of tuple routing. We don't need uh, the, the uh, triggers anymore. Uh, and moreover, uh, the Postgres internally checks the partition bounds and ensures that there is no overlap. And additionally, uh, new features like attached partition and detached partitions uh, also included. So there is a SQL interface for that. Mm, uh, so uh, the, because we discussed about the partitions are basically tables. So we can attach a part, uh, partition, uh, attach a table to a partition table and it becomes a partition of that table or detach a partition and it becomes an independent table. So which is a really nice feature, um, uh, especially for archiving and purging requirements. This is really wonderful. And um, uh, 
uh, postgres 10 supports multi level partitioning we can have partition and there can be sub partition and sub uh, the part, sub partition can be of another type say we have a range partition it can there can be a list partition within that so all these things were supported and um, so quickly back to the uh, demo uh, to to understand the concept clearly so um, I'm, I'm just uh, going to zoom this area, uh, the Postgres 11 part, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the 10 part, uh, because that's something new in Postgres 10. So we can see the title here. Uh, this is PG10, so I'm going to zoom to the, uh, that area. Okay, and uh, uh, this is how it works. Uh, I am going to create the, the, the table. Um, uh, let me drop the previous table. Okay. So um, that's done and uh, create a table. So table is created, sorry for, uh, okay, let me go back to the, the, the previous screen size. It, it will be good for me to. Okay, so table is created um, there. Um, oh, sorry for, okay, let me, let me do that for all the versions, okay? Uh, Re-executing uh, the things. Okay, so um, table, okay, sorry for the, 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 the problem. Let me drop it again and um, create again. So uh, from Postgres 10 onwards, we have this uh, partition by range. And um, then we can create partitions, uh, say for events on quarter one and quarter two. And when we create the partition for the quarter two, um, it is not a partition, but it, it, it's a partitioned, uh, it, 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 it's a, it is itself is a partition table. So it can have sub partitions. So because we are expecting a lot of uh, activity on uh, the quarter two. So we can uh, go and create more uh, sub partitions there. Um, and um, so the, you, you get the concept, right? So we can have partitions and sub partitions uh, for each, each of this range. Um, so based on the, the requirement. So there is no limitation how you are going to partition the, the table. Okay, so that's a, that's a, this, is a, this is a new concept introduced in Postgres 10. Okay, and let me drop the table. Fine, going back to the presentation. Uh, so we saw the multi-level partitioning, uh, partitions of partitions within the partitions, okay. And this is a really wonderful feature, uh, something which was uh, not possible uh, earlier and never thought about and yeah. Okay, um, next is the another wonderful feature is uh, the partition itself can be a foreign table. So there is um, yes, a syntax for that. Create foreign table, uh, the foreign table name partition of another table so the partition partition need not be sitting in a, in a local database or it can be on a remote uh, remote uh, postgres instance or host machine itself here yeah. uh, each partition can be on a remote postgres sql and in, it uses the postgres sql fdw so foreign data wrappers so uh, this kind of uh, feature is really wonderful. So this, this is a 
added feature which which we never expected before uh, postgres 10 okay and um, everything looks really nice wonderful set of features but there were a lot of uh, problems okay there were no unique keys possible no primary keys no foreign keys so this was a uh, this created a practical uh, limitation for postgres Post so the adoption rates were not so good in when the postgres uh, 10 came up with the native partition because of all these limitations these are very basic things which we expect from a table and that's the time postgres 11 came in 2018 fixing all practical problems that's we are going to see what we know that a post system came with the post, uh, the uh, native uh, range partition and list partition and then now we have even harsh partition also uh, uh, majority of the partitions in the real world will be still range and list but um, post 11 onwards we have a hash partitioning feature also uh, which is uh, re requested by a lot of users of other database systems because they will be migrating and they want similar things and uh, so, so some there are still some of use cases like uh, um, data distribution uh, say the hash partition advantage is the data will be almost equally distributed to all the partitions irrespective of the, uh, the partition and uh, it helps in sharding and the parallel processing so there are specific use cases for hash partitions also so that's a new, completely new feature in Postgres 11. And uh, we talked about all the practical problems are solved. Uh, yes, we have unique keys, uh, primary keys, and foreign keys in uh, Postgres 11. So coming back to the demo. So um, um, we are going to create the same table uh, on uh, different postgres versions and we can see that in postgres 10 it failed primary constraint is not supported on partition tables but the same thing works in postgres 11 onwards 11 12 and 13 we have uh, the primary keys okay that's 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 uh, solve some of the uh, practical uh, problems so let me create another table create a, a, a table called partitioned, um, partitioned by range, and add a unique constraint. In process 10, it fails, uh, but in process 11 onwards, we can see it is successful. And um, uh, adding a primary key, that also fails in process 10, but from 11 onwards, it works. And let, let us create a, a, another table, say blah, okay? Uh, and um, add a foreign key constraint. It fails in Postgres 10, but 11 onwards, it works. So these are the, the practical problems which uh, uh, Postgres uh, 11 solved. Okay, coming back to the presentation. And another beautiful thing uh, in Postgres 11, uh, the, the migrations. Okay. What is migration? Uh, the row can migrate from uh, migrate to write partitions on update. Uh, modification to values of partitions, partition keys allowed. Okay, and um, uh, coming back to the uh, demonstration. Hmm. So let us create two more uh, partitions. Um, okay. For the the previous table, um, okay. So uh, if you describe, uh, we can see that all the uh, the, the uh, partition constraints are uh, already uh, placed uh, properly. Um, this is part of uh, okay. And uh, uh, let, let's uh, drop the foreign key um, because in Postgres 10, uh, 
there is no foreign key possible so it, it's uh, it's not existing anyway okay and um, mm, let us move to the mm, uh, the demonstration of uh, raw migration so let us insert some data into this table so, okay this uh, table uh, insert insert a couple of uh, rows uh, sorry one, one row to the table and if you look at where where the row went we can see that it went to the partition partition for uh, in the range of uh, one to five okay and if you look at the other partition it is empty which holds the value from 5 to 10 and what happens if you update this update this uh, row the, we have only single row in the table so if we just update uh, postgres 10 complains that uh, um, while is the partition constraint but it is successful on postgres 11 onwards and what happens behind so if you look at the previous uh, partitions we can see the uh, the the uh, partition for range 1 to 5 is empty now and uh, the row is migrated to the next partition the, the appropriate partition this was uh, really required in real world because uh, there will be updates happening in the table and uh, we expect the um, um, the partition table to work and handle the situation uh, instead of throwing some error that it violates the partition constraint yeah so th that was a really practical problem uh, solved and uh, catching the falling um, so uh, we uh, uh, the, the problem of um, uh, what if what happens if uh, uh, if there is a value which is out of the uh, range uh, which we specified. So Postgres 11 introduces uh, default partition. So if there is no partition available which can satisfy the, the condition, uh, the row can go to the default partition. And um, this is important, very important for uh, real uh, production deployments because we will be partitioning a, an existing table and we want we are expecting the partition table to function as it was uh, without throwing any errors. Yeah, so uh, now you know, from Postgres uh, 11 onwards, uh, the default partition is supported. Okay, that's a really, really, really nice feature to add. And um, uh, this is another thing. Still, um, uh, I'm discussing with some of the Postgres users about this feature uh, because this is so beautiful. Uh, we can define indexes on the on the partitioned table, and uh, whenever a child table is created, index will be created on, on that automatically. Um, uh, so, um, and additional. Uh, indexes can be created on each individual partitions based on the requirement. And uh, say, for example, um, if there is a live partition which called the latest um, uh, information, uh, so we may need additional indexes on that particular partition alone. That's possible. And uh, this is a performance improvement uh, in Postgres 11. Uh, the partition wise aggregate. So what happens is if the partition key uh, is part of a, the group close, say uh, we partition the table based on monthly and our uh, query requires a group by month. Okay, so now the Postgres knows that the data for each aggre aggregation can come from individual partitions. So uh, partition wise aggregation is possible from Postgres 11 onwards. Um, and uh, if the group by clause does not contain any of the partition key, uh, keys, uh, we can still perform partition aggregation for each partition and then finalize the aggregation after, after the appending partition result. So, so it is go beyond that capability also. And um, um, we have, few cases where we saw up to seven times performance improvement because of this partition aggregation happening over foreign servers. So the part, uh, the aggregations can happen on foreign servers and the result can be sent over to the 
local machine. So it gives a lot of performance benefit. But still not perfect. Postgres 11 came up with so many good features and fixes. Uh, so what was the problem? Uh, the performance. Uh, the, the numbers you are seeing in the screen is is from a real user. Um, uh, the planning time was several times than the actual execution. This is uh, real, real world numbers. So uh, we had many user complaining that they partitioned the table, everything works wonderful, but they are not seeing any benefit out of it, any performance benefit out of that. Yeah, that's, that's a serious complaint. Uh, planning time is uh, very high in many cases. Uh, partition pruning is not intelligent enough. Mm, many times it's uh, resulting in poor plan. Uh, no performance gain after partitioning and sometimes even slower performance than the un unpartitioned table. This is the most difficult situation. Uh, we guide people to you, go for partition and finally they see a a negative performance result. Yes. And more uh, another serious problem. Performance, uh, the, uh, the performance degrades as the number of partition increases. So that those, those were the serious problems uh, till Postgres 11. And uh, that's the time Postgres 12 came in 2019. It's faster, it solves all performance related pains, okay? And here is an example. So I'm not going to do the live demo, but uh, just keeping the screenshots. Uh, as we can see in the screen, uh, the Postgres 11 was taking a lot of planning time and the same uh, query takes considerably less planning time in Postgres 12. And um, uh, not just select statements, here is an up update statement. Here also we can see that uh, it's uh, uh, it takes very less compared to the previous version. So almost all queries uh, which is using partitions were started running much faster in, in Postgres 12 without any code modification uh, uh, from application perspective, any, without any change just out of box, just after upgrade, they started seeing uh, performance benefits. And not just uh, statements, uh, say there is a um, huge performance gain uh, when we do bulk data loading. Yeah, so um, uh, even when we do just PG dump and PG restore, uh, there is a performance gain, uh, noticeable performance gain. And um, in a typical uh, PG dump and PG restore, I, I, I see up to 21 uh, percentage of gain, uh, but a uh, lot of reports that there are seeing up to 40 percent uh, performance gain in. So other things, insert performance improved, uh, better scaling up as the partition count decreases. This was one of the pain point in Postgres 11. Now it scales well. Um, even we have, even if we have more partition, uh, it, it, the performance won't degrade as Postgres 11. Uh, and primary key lookup uh, becomes several hundreds of uh, times performance gain in, in many, some, in at least in some cases. Um, so um, this were the uh, real world use cases where people started seeing the the, the performance gain. So the, in the underlying thing, we saw that the, um, the planning time decreased because uh, in Postgres 12, the metadata the, for the plan uh, is loading, uh, the metadata loading is performed after the partition pruning. The partition pruning took the precedence than uh, the rest of the things. That was a big change in, in, the, in design, but it resulted in a lot of performance gain in multiple areas. And, um, Another planner related modifications, improvements. Say uh, we can see that the, the merge append node is gone in Postgres uh, 12. Uh, so unnecessary uh, merge append, uh, no, merge append or just append nodes are gone in many cases, uh, resulting in a better performance. 
and it is not just these things uh, so uh, i had a different talk on um, the, uh, the only postgres 12 there are at least um, uh, 15 slides were about uh, the postgres 12 performance improvements so this is uh, the summary of uh, some of other changes other improvements in postgres 12 um, so as i as I already mentioned uh, the partition pruning took the precedence. So uh, postpone rest of the things to happen after that. So it need to be performed only on few of the pruned um, the partitions. Okay, and improve the performance of partition pruning, uh, redesign of initialization of partition routing. Um, so the DMLs started performing much better. Uh, delay the lock acquisition so the concurrency improved um, and uh, speed up the planner uh, so and uh, multi inserts on, on partition partition the table um, that's that's also working fine in process 12 uh, avoid sorting when partitions are already being scanned in the in the necessary order so the the planner and executor every part of postgres 12 is uh, fine tuned for uh, the partition table so uh, the partition the table is a uh, prime citizen uh, from uh, postgres 12 onwards the planner is fully aware about it and it does the right thing to do and yeah we discussed about a lot of um, speed up improvement in speed speed uh, is there anything other than speed so the obvious question is that uh, is the postgres 12 is not just about uh, partitioning uh, speed uh, there are a lot more partitioning related features here is uh, another big benefit the attach uh, is non blocking uh, so there can be better concurrency uh, because uh, attaching uh, a partition is part of the regular dba job um, uh, when a new time uh, when a new window of uh, the partition starts uh, the dba or the script or the automation need to add a new new partition so attaching a partition um, or um, uh, is, is a regular part of dba job so now it can be performed without an in a non-blocking way this is a big big game and um, the foreign key references to partition table uh, is possible from postgres 12 it's more closer to the native uh, the non-partition table experience uh, which is what generally people expect when they partition a table so as we can see postgres 11 will throw an error but Postgres uh, 12 uh, we can accommodate the foreign key reference to the partition table. And uh, uh, when we talk about the partitioning of a table, uh, the DBS do, may not want always to come up with exact values of a partition boundary. Uh, instead of that, they, they may want to have an expression and it is supported in Postgres uh, 12. So uh, here is an example. Uh, partitioning a table uh, without actually specifying the, the boundary values. Now, from now onwards till now plus five days. So this will be evaluated while creating the partition. So uh, anytime uh, if the DBA or the script want to uh, create a new partition, uh, they can execute the same statement. Uh, it will be evaluated and new partition will be created. Okay which was not uh, the case in previous uh, Postgres versions. And uh, table space specification at partition to table level. Uh, so this was a limitation um, uh, as we couldn't give top level guidance on where, where the partitions to be placed. Uh, all new partitions created will be using the table space, uh, specif uh, table space specification at the partition table level. So we know that the parent table doesn't hold any data, but it can have the information about the table space to which uh, the each partition should go, and we can alter that so that all of subsequent day, uh, the, the the partitions will go there. Okay, and table space can be specified at the partition table uh, partitioned table using create table or 
alter the table later so that we can segregate the partitions. This was uh, a practical, uh, uh, this was an important feature from the practical perspective when we deal with the uh, multiple table spaces and uh, disk systems. And uh, we may want to uh, have archiving, um, archive partitions into some other table space. So all these partition, uh, the table space manipulations were really great. And these are some of the, uh, the improvements in terms of uh, DB experience. Uh, so we can look at the partition uh, hierarchy using a function, PG partition root. Uh, this is a user level um, uh, interface. So we can say select start from partition tree. It will list out the partitions uh, in, in hierarchical order. And we have a root and ancestors. So there are many functions added for DBS con convenience. Okay. And uh, another thing is uh, the, the, the system catalog views started giving a lot more information about uh, the partition indexes. PG index will give information about the partition index as we, as we can see in the screen. Uh, Postgres 12 uh, will have the information from, but Postgres 11 uh, won't give that information. And not just server side, we have a lot more things in the client side as well. Uh, PSQL uh, metadata commands, say we can say a slash DP from uh, Postgres 12 onwards, it will give all the list of partition tables and indexes. And, um, and even if we are just describing a table, it will be clearly mentioned it is a partition table, not a regular table. That's an improvement. Uh, and um, same is the case with even if you are checking a privilege of uh, on a table, uh, it will be clearly mentioned that it is a partition table. So this is a client side improvement, but really helpful for uh, those who are working with Postgres. And then comes the Postgres 13. Um, just a, so now many of us used to think, uh, say Postgres 12 fixes all performance improvements and comes up with all sort of new features, uh, all fancy features. So what is there in Postgres 13? It is released in 2020 and the evolution is not stopping. The, the big addition is uh, we can have triggers uh, before um, for each row triggers are possible from uh, Postgres 13 onwards. So uh, here, everywhere we are seeing that uh, the, the partition table is becoming more and more closer to the real, uh, the single table experience. So what was missing is added later and uh, there, there is no more penalties for partitioning uh, a table. So the triggers were not possible in Postgres 12, but it is possible in 13. And uh, there is a lot more cases for better partition pruning. Uh, and uh, one beautiful thing about this is, uh, this actually simplified the logic. The, the, lo the logic behind the partition pruning become much simpler uh, while attaining uh, more um, capabilities. Uh, the logic become generic, uh, apply constraints more generally in, uh, in partitioning. Mm -hmm. a, a, a constraint exclusion logic uh, itself won't be invoked in avoidable cases. Uh, so uh, as we can see in the screen, um, uh, the, the, instead of going through um, multiple uh, partitions, uh, in many places it will result in uh, uh, single step. So a lot, lot of optimizations in terms of uh, planner. Um, and another thing in, in terms of planner is uh, advanced partition matching and the partition wise joining. Uh, previously, the partition wise joining technique only allowed when the input partition tables had exactly matching the same partition bounds. Say uh, one, if the bound is uh, of the one table is a certain range, the next uh, table, the, the partition also should be of same range. But uh, the new algorithm overcomes all those uh, limitations. Uh, and as we can see in the screen, um, it does. Uh, the, this was the previous condition. 
and um, now uh, it can happen the partition wise uh, joins so you can see that hash join happens on, on the partition wise instead of preparing a complete hash and then up join do a uh, thing so this is much more efficient and And this is another practical uh, use, useful feature in, in partitioning. Uh, now partition table can participate in logical replication. Uh, this feature allows partition table to be logically replicated via publication. So previously partitions had to be, uh, each partition, each partition had to be uh, replicated individually. Now uh, a partition table can be published. At, at the top level uh, can be published causing all the partition to be published automatically so we don't have to specify each of those partitions and addition or removal of partition to an existing partitioned table causes additional or, or removal from the publication also so a lot of things a lot of uh, problems are gone all uh, headaches are gone so new additional uh, option to uh, publish via root. So th there is a syntax as well, uh, uh, how to be published, publish via um, partition root is equal to true. So the, the publication happens from the root of the partition tree. That was not the case in process 12. We couldn't do that. It used to throw errors. And uh, the advantage is not just a publisher part, uh, even in the subscriber part as well. Now subscriber can uh, replicate to partition tables, uh, applying uh, replicated changes to the ta target table, which is, is a partition table uh, and to its relevant partition. So um, the, the subscriber parts, part also is much simpler now. Uh, uh, previously, subscriber could only receive rows into non-partition table or the, the individual partitions. And uh, process um, 13 has had a lot more features. Uh, I won't be covering all of them. And this year, uh, we have process 14. So uh, evolution is not stopping and much smarter. And um, now DMLs like updates and deletes are handled in much cleaner. So again, the underlying code becomes more generic and simpler. Uh, so this is one thing I like about Postgres. Uh, so to add a feature, the code is not getting complicated, but the, uh, the previous uh, unnecessary hacks are removed uh, from, uh, and it becomes simpler and straightforward. Uh, so this, uh, uh, the work is done by Tom Lane. Um, the reducing the this particular uh, thing is reducing the planning cost and memory consumption uh, for uh, DML operations. Uh, it generates a single sub plan for the target relations of a partition table. That's a we got to end it instead of having all uh, sub plan for all the all the uh, target relations. This uh, uh, change uh, uh, greatly reduces the planner's overhead. Okay. So now DMLs are even uh, fast with the, uh, even simplification, code simplification. And uh, uh, when, we, when we talk about uh, a big feature, so the, 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 the previous one was kind of um, underlying change. Uh, no one may not notice that, but here this is a big feature. Now the detached partition can be online. So we can detach a partition without blocking. And it is, uh, it is implemented as a little hack. Uh, it's not so straightforward. So there is a separate syntax. So alter table, detach partition, concurrently we, we have to specify. Uh, for attaching the partition, we don't have to specify this. Um, I, automatically it will be non-blocking way. Uh, and this is one of the most uh, frequently requested feature, uh, allowing partition to be detached from the partition, the table without blocking concurrent queries and new syntax. Uh, and um, uh, there is an additional thing, uh, because as I mentioned, this is a little hack by introducing uh, two transactions at a time. So there, there, there could be chances that um, 
uh, the things can go wrong uh, so we have an option to finalize some of the detached operation if the session gets disconnected or aborted in between the operation uh, don't worry uh, just to execute the finalize option it will complete the work uh, this is like um, uh, when we do index rebuild concurrently um, the index can go in, in, invalidated or uh, non-useful condition this is the same situation but we we have an option to come out of that uh, cleanly so there is no problem uh, but there is some limitations um, we can't do this in a transaction block because the entire thing happens in in two transactions so we cannot put that into another transaction so that's a one limitation um, and we have a dedicated syntax we need to specify concurrently explicitly mm and uh, this won't work for default partition and there are other uh, improvements as well uh, the, the collation is implicitly calls uh, to do the collation so uh, it won't throw error anymore uh, it will be forced to uh, the ad addition of uh, attaching the partition is simpler and straightforward now the index process to all all uh, say if you execute re-index, uh, it will process all child tables uh, and all indexes of, of all the, the, the partitions. Uh, internally, each partition gets processed in a separate transaction. This is one point we should remember. So when we execute a re-index on a partition the table, uh, each of the partitions will be uh, getting uh, processed by individual transactions. So another feature is uh, Postgres FDW. Now we can say import uh, foreign schema limited to, uh, so that we can uh, even import partitions uh, using the syntax. Um, so there is a syntax uh, uh, improvement. That's uh, uh, very useful. And um, uh, so we talked about um, uh, post up to Postgres 14, uh, but yeah, um, it is not, about just uh, major version changes even uh, there are improvements happening even with the uh, uh, minor versions which is silent in inside some of the examples are there so keep upgrading your um, postgres uh, keep up to date uh, you are going to get all the benefits of new features and improvements happening in the system okay and some of the good talks and the references and things like that and thank you uh, for attending the conference. And if you have any question, please uh, post it to us uh, and uh, we'll be replying to that. Thank you very much.